Engagement in Peril Chapter 1 Meanings I'm looking for a meaning to all that had happened these past plus 30 years. At the very least, a reason for the rise of this bastard you've come to read about. It is with bright eyes that I recall and tell you this. Recently, if I brushed with another near-death experience this past mid-September 2010. It's been slightly over a year now that I have moved away from the ghetto slum and rancid memories of Cherry Pineapple Grove, the very city that brought turmoil and debt upon my late beloved Shinshin Nagami. I've missed him so. As you may have read in Volume 3, Shinshin Nagami, the bastard torn and the succubus they slept with, what I and that terrible Catholic succubus Delilah had done to him and to his once giving nature. Still with blood-stained shame and despair, I recently recite quietly and in somewhat seclusion in and about the cold misty suburb of this Green Valley mist. I'm hiding out here for a while, one can say, just to get away from my troubled past and to start anew in this growing corridor just on the outskirts of the nearby large metropolitan city. I'm staying with friends and their family. Of course I came here for other reasons as well. Being a deeply involved pessimist, I no longer care or give a damn anymore what may eventually become of me. Cambodian Christian's Bastardly Affair it has now come down to this. I have recently offered all of myself for a cause to help support and sponsor a family's friend, granddaughter, niece, and cousin in sponsoring her to the U.S. What have I gotten myself into? Have I lost my way? I must have, because it all turned quite sour since then. I must tell you, these people that I thought was helping are quite the ignorant, bastardly Christians. What kind of religious people gossips, lies, cheats, and steal from the very church they worship? And for all their deceit, it is often amongst themselves, within their immediate family, that they tend to backstab and outdo one another in every aspect of everyday life. The majority of their argument and altercation are often over greedy, materialistic things, the very thing that will eventually burn, rot, and decay. What kind of bastardly Christians are they? I just couldn't believe that I had fallen for their cons. If my beloved Shinshin were around, he would have picked up on their con, conniving ways from the get-go. But I was so stupid and so ignorant then, and I tried my best to help them out. I had thought I was doing a good thing to only later find that they are the very demons that I tried to avoid all this time. May God forgive me for my transgression and trespasses against my once unsoiled Shin Shin. I've missed him so much. I can only hope that heaven's a good fit for Shin Shin. I know that where I am going, all I can do is look up and smile at my beloved who is now gone. Now, my volunteering of my personal time and services to help a family with the sponsorship of their orphan granddaughter, niece and cousin was part of the was the spur of the moment thing. While having a nice Fourth of July celebration with her so called grandparents and family, and with some of her supposedly friends and acquaintances at their summer home by a man made lake and reservoir, Lake McConaughey in Ogallala, Nebraska, I come to find that one of their nephew in Battenbong, Cambodia had just died from complications of leukemia. So I was told by the satin host family then. From the sad news of, of their nephew's sudden death, they brought up stories of their orphan granddaughters as well, who has a, had an awful life there in Battenbong, Cambodia where her parents live 
and had killed himself when she, when she was just an infant and that she has gone from home to home since then. Her father killed himself over some gambling debts and her mother overdosed on pills and narcotics after being raped by her very own uncle. They mentioned that she was quite the hard worker there. She was treated like a servant more, more like a slave than one of their own kin and flesh and blood in that horrible town of Battambang, Cambodia. Their sad and sappy story got to me, and I thought I could help, and since I was looking for a way to get away from all the harsh reality of Cherry Pineapple Grove, it was a good fit for me then. I was looking for a way out and to get away from my recent loss of my beloved Shinshin, of which I blame myself for his sad, tragic, and mysterious demise. I just know that bitch Lila and her conniving mother, Lilith, had something to do with his death. I just can't prove it yet. All I know then was that I need to get away from all the things that reminded me of him and his once God-giving good nature. I just had to run away from it all, and perhaps I will be able to find peace in the process. That was my main purpose in agreeing to help that poor orphan girl in Cambodia. Just like my, my endearing mother who have in numerous times met and taken a strong liking to this so-called mentioned poor slave girl, I too have grown somewhat fond and appreciative of this young lady whom I have recently met during my trip to Battambang, Cambodia this past October of 2009. So innocent and so naive she was. That's what I hope and I like to think. I wish that she could read and understand my past writing. Maybe then, only then, will she understand and know who and how I really am, both as a human being and as the son of a bitch bastard that is both the culprit and torn because of the recent loss of Shin Shin this past months. This delightful girl whom I will not name well, she seemed, she, she, she seemed to think that she's in love with me. We barely know each other from the two weeks we spent socializing together in and during my visit to Cambodia. I wasn't even allowed near her then. We were often watched over and looked after, after during our so-called supposedly engagement and association then. Anyhow, the goal of my venture there was to help sponsor her here to the U.S. It has been over 30 plus years since I last set foot on the very land that is my birthplace. I had escaped the atrocity of war and the Khmer Rouge insurgent and turmoil then, and I wasn't sure I wanted to go back there, even to visit and do the sponsorship. Eventually I was convinced to do as much. My mother had encouraged me to help and the sad orphan girl, to help the poor innocent orphan girl and for my mother's sake and happiness. I would have walked through the fire of hell to do that for her. Mom was looking out for me. She had wanted her oldest son to be married and have his own family. I knew that Cambodia wasn't a place for me, and I hate that country for what it is, corrupt and harsh. I hate that country for, for what it has done to my dead father, and for all the torments and anguish and agonizing pain that it had put my angelic mother through back then in the 70s and 80s. Now, Banbong is currently the second largest city in the small country of Cambodia and is well known as the leading rice producer in that country. It is also the main hub of the northwest connecting the entire region with its capital city of Phnom Penh and the neighboring country of Thailand. My travel and stay there wasn't great at all. Nothing really went well. It rained much during that time and I was stricken with several illnesses and injuries. The entire country of Cambodia hasn't changed much since my stint there in my previous life where I was born into a world of turmoil, atrocity and war. The government is still corrupt with muddy, hoarding, greedy hands and still somewhat communist with their political turmoil and issues. It is still much a third world country just like how I had remembered it then. And crimes, prostitutions, Murders and recklessness still runs about the land. My first night in Ban Bong, I got up in the middle of the night to use the restroom around 0300. 
While making my way down from the second floor level to the bottom level to use their restroom facility, I was pushed down a steep wooden flight of stairs by some ghostly demonic spirit and had almost broken my neck from the hideous outcome. From the mysterious fall, I was met by the angelic orphan girl seconds later at the bottom of the stairs. I had injured my back, neck, shins, and ankles. As a result, I had several long cuts and scratches on my back, shin, knees from the fall. I was aching all over, of course. Mostly my pride was hurt. I was quite embarrassed, and for the next few days, the entire household and neighbors had a good laugh at my expense. There wasn't much to do there as well. The so-called devoted Christian people that I had gone with to Cambodia to help sponsor the girl, well, they weren't as pleasant to me as I hoped they would be. They had lied and fed me deceiving promises to get me to help them out. The worst of these bunch of fake Christians was the girl's so-called grandfather. He had promised to me that he would pay for all the expenses of sponsoring her over and that all they needed was my name and social security number to make that happen. He promised to pay for the application fee and the cost of the medical and physical exam for her and even the interview fee as well. He did nothing of the kind. What a self-righteous lying son of a bitch that he is then and even now. Since then, I haven't spoken much words to this asshole of a man that I once had respected and had thoughts that was like, he was like my father to me. Besides being in much pain from my in the dark head first tumbling and falling injury, the very next morning there, it started pouring. Much rain fell throughout the day. It rained so much that it practically rose up to my knees. There I was in Cambodia during its monsoon season and hated being there all the same. I wasn't able to walk about the area and, s and since I had several deep open wounds and scar, so I just sat around in their humid home and chill in my lonesome self. I also caught a bad case of the flu where my mother and the orphan girl helped to coin me to help me feel better. As a result of helping me to heal, my mother and the orphan girl too were stricken with the flu, same flu that I had. I was there in hating life while with those terrible so-called Christians for a miserable two plus week during our trip there in Cambodia. It was there that I really saw their true nature then and how horrible people they really are. They had used and brought one of their natural born American niece, Jessica to marry a Cambodian nephew on the uncle's side of the family for monetary compensation to help bring him over to the States as well. They had taken the, his money and gave very little to Jessica as compensation for her part. Jessica never wanted to do this sort of thing in the first place, but they, ha they somehow convinced and connived her to go with it, just like how they had conned me. Luckily for Jessica, the guy that she had helped to sponsor, well, he actually he actually failed his interview at the embassy and wasn't allowed to come to the States. It was quite the relief for Jessica since, since she is now a proud, mo a proud mother of a beautiful boy. I wasn't getting any compensation on my part nor did I ask for any monetary offering of the sorts. Instead, I dwell in their cold basement and kept mostly to myself then. I seldom ate their food and for the most part, I shunned them altogether. The only thing that I really do with or associate with them then was to go to their place of worship. I had, I had thought they were actually decent people then. But lo and behold, I found out real fast what kind of worshippers they were then. The third Khmer Christian Reformed Church is their sanctuary for demonic rituals and gossips. It was here that they talked shit and damn other minorities and non-Christian believers. It was here that I found that this was Satan's hideout. 
they were all consumed by God's fallen angel and used this church as a front to worship God Almighty. What a bunch of rubbish those people are. I knew they were all eventually going to hell for their false religious ritual and practices. I so much despised them for what they had done to me this past 18 months. I think it's because of them that I am now stricken with multiple illnesses and was infected with H. pylori bacterial infection and now have early signs of type 2 diabetes. How could I have allowed myself to be so ignorant then, even after what had happened to my beloved Shin Shin Nagami months earlier? How could I have been the total bastard and turn around to be a total douche? I should have slapped myself a few times then to realize what has happening to me. But I was in deep and I wanted so bad to help that poor orphan girl in Cambodia. All I can do now is wish her luck and success and hope it gets better for her. Somehow I'm sure Shinshin's watching over her and for my sake, I surely hope he is. Back to how I go about sponsoring the orphan young lady here to the US. The form that I needed to sponsor this lovely girl was quite simple. On my part, I was to use the I-129F Petition for Alien Fiancé form to sponsor her over as a fiancé. I also added some additional form from the girl's country of origin and documents from there that we were engaged to be married. My trip to Cambodia there was to do such. We had a double engagement ceremony there in Bat Bong, Cambodia. The orphan girl and I and their niece Jessica and the guy who they who paid them to be sponsored. We had an emer a engagement ceremony where we pretend to exchange hands, engagement rings, strings, fruit basket, and other items whatnot in front of witnesses including family, friends, and strangers. And our pictures were taken during and throughout the grueling ceremony. We also signed some document with our personal information and had to stamp an item and document with thumbs and thumbs and our fingerprints. Eventually, after many months of waiting and anticipation, the application that I had put in and sent off to the USCIS for sparring the orphan girl as my fiance was approved and she was scheduled for a physical exam. An interview date was given to her at their capital country city of Phnom Penh. During that whole time I waited for news about her case, the entire family there in the Green Valley Miss, who were supposedly related to her, had never once asked me what was going on with her case and how or how she and I were doing regarding our so-called relationship. All they cared about was that about their related nephew who paid them to be sponsored here to the States. They seemed not to care one bit about the orphan girl and there they are going to worship at the Third Khmer Christian Reformed Church in Aurora of Helena Street and Tile Road. Their deceiving lies and ignorance really got on my nerves and as I was constantly angry and peeved at their inconceivable lying ass action and circumstances. Well, that fall, their so-called orphan niece failed the interview in September of 2010 and wasn't allowed to be sponsored to the state by me. And you know what? They tried to blame it on me for her failing the interview. What the fuck? You see how these badly Christian assholes are? A, bun of, a bunch of degenerate who didn't even care for their own niece and granddaughter. That's another reason why I despise them so much. I will never believe another thing those people tell me. For, I, for all I care, they can just leave me the hell alone. God, God will judge them. And they will be going to the same place as I am, since I've been judged for the many sins against my beloved Shin Shin Nagami. And when I see them down there in hell, I will joyfully eyeball, sneer, smirk, and laugh at them, and then be on my merry way to get my punishment. They are such hypocrites, pretending to devote, pretending to be devoted Christian in front of friends and associates. In reality, they were the worst of them all, damn fake ass, bastardly Christians. I hope they burn in the fire of hell. You know that they have brought many of their relatives and friends over to the state through sponsorship and engagement 
having their own children and themselves marrying them to bring them over and in the process so they had married for monetary compensation and then once a person is here and after a while after several years once they get their residency and green card then they divorce the person and then they start their conniving routine all over again it's how they roll they have cheated the government much these past many years for example this past autumn of 2010 their most recent acquisition are their blood related nephew and girl cousin who they got their youngest daughter and oldest son to marry and sponsor over to the state as fiance both of them passed the embassy interview and are now here in the state you know they even convinced their nephew's girlfriend in Cambodia to abort her own baby and they promised and lied to her that they will eventually bring her and sponsor her over to the state as well once her boyfriend divorced his own cousin after he gets his naturalization paper where's the Christian belief in them when they decide to abort the life of an innocent infant such hypocrite they are what goes around comes around I don't think they will ever bring that girl that they had promised in Cambodia over to the States I know for a fact now that she's married over there with some other person before he was brought to the state they sent him money to take make sure that his girlfriend there in Cambodia gets their backyard abortion before they bring their natural born American daughter over to the mar to do the marriage proposal in Cambodia with him his aunt had wanted to make sure that her daughter didn't know that their male blood cousin had knocked up his girlfriend back in Cambodia months earlier before he came to the US to live with them as their so called son-in-law the government has no idea what these horrendous bastardly Christian have done and how much illegal means they have committed such hypocrites the natural born girl cousin too have had her share of abortions at the local health clinic here in the US right behind her Christian parents back that's the type of Christian they are such hypocritical bastardly Christian I tell you of course I'm not a good Christian myself I have never been a good faithful Christian at the least I admit my downfalls and fallacies about my faith and religion Oh, I have soiled my share of sins and shame, that I can say. And yet these people just don't care if their supposedly nephew drive them to the poorhouse. For example, his first month in the States, he rang up their home and cell phone bill to over $1,200. And how did they punish him, you ask? Well, here it goes. They reprimanded him and knowingly that he was in the wrong, with crocodile tears convinced them that he was truly sorry for what he had done he pre pretended to cry that he had missed his family and girlfriend back in Cambodia he knew what he was doing I and a few other had already told him and warned him to use a calling card when calling his girlfriend and family back in Battenbaum Cambodia but no that son of a bitch of an asshole called his family and friends straight from the house and sell your phone without thinking about the financial hassle and outcome I knew then that they had brought over the wrong person. They had brought over a lazy son of a bitch who steals, cheats, and lies. They had brought over the very type of people they were. I realized then that those bastardly Christians and that conniving punk, well, they deserve each other. Let me tell you a little bit about this stupid ass son of a bitch. Well, he has no shame, not one bit. He takes things without asking. He has no shame asking for unnecessary things. He see what other have, he wants it better and bluntly demands that he should have it. He drives people vehicle without asking for permission. He snoops through people's bedroom and drawers and sometimes ransack the household belongings. He damn well know what he's doing. He kisses ass with people he knows that could give him things and several times I've witnessed his, this asshole of an ingrate having done inappropriate things with the family's younger daughters and granddaughters his supposedly nieces 
when whenever someone reprimanded him for the things he did wrong or didn't care about he fakes his stupidity ignorance and runs to his self-righteous aunt for support and backup in turn her excuses to protect him are often that he is a, is new to the state and he doesn't know any better it's funny over the phone he boasts and brags to his family and friend back in Cambodia how he has it made here this fucking unthankful son of a bitch will be the camel that breaks their back I guess it has now begun to what God would do to them for having selfishly sinned while using his good name in vain he even thinks that people that had brought him to the state are wealthy I laugh over the matter there are people who live off credit cards and debts that's why they use other people's social security to get more credit card and use each other to sponsor immigrant over so they can be get monetary income on the side they truly deserve each other I tell you those people are no good indeed I wish my beloved Shinshin was still around he would have talked some sense into me when all of a sudden I gladly jumped to helping them with the sponsorship of their so-called orphan granddaughter and niece and cousin I was so conned another thing about this son of a bitch and his sinful blood related family and relative there about six months after he had arrived from Cambodia to the US I was told to go with him and his so-called wife girl cousin to Centennial to translate for them during their initial green card interview at the US Citizenship and Immigration Services both sponsored male and female cousin had the interview on the same day and time their asshole of a minister and blood uncle from their church translated for the other couple where I was translating for the other couple during the interview the federal inspector didn't bother asking them about any personal things it was kind of odd to me then but I just kept my mouth shut and translated only when I was asked directly to be tr to translate the inspector started by asking the so-called male cousin and husband if he had ever sold drugs or prostituted himself while living in Cambodia he said no in, Ca in, in Cambodian Khmer. I translated no in English then he asked all the so-called loving couple to provide their current address and ask for their marriage document that they received from the county courthouse and some picture of them having shared time and event together and that was pretty much of the questioning of their response supposedly relationship I was thinking to myself then there was any question about the what side of the bed the married couple slept on and what color was their toothbrush and what was their birth place and birth date and such nothing like that was asked about by the federal inspector the United States natural born girl cousin wife then did the rest of the talking she was practically fraternizing with the inspector then to keep his mind elsewhere she was stroking the inspector's ego and he was falling for her conniving way the inspector then talked about his career and how he had transferred from the Los Angeles immigration department then to Centennial and that he too had married a foreign Japanese woman and help her migrate to the United States as well I interrupted the festive conversation as how long do the two so-called recently married couple have to stay together before filing for divorce that was a hint to the inspector then about their fake marriage but he didn't get that as well he went on to tell all of us then that his office in his office that they have to be, be legally married together for five years before they can be divorced and that the husband can apply for his citizenship after residing three consecutive years in the US with good standing of course and that he will approve their green card re residency que request for two years and they will have another interview when the two two years up and that they will be notified by mail in about three months before the due date and should respond swiftly to the mailed out notification all I could do then was shake my head in disgust and disbelief while we all left his office and went back to our places of residence I was peeved over the matter these lying sinful people are getting away with all this illegal acts then I also questioned myself then was the immigration inspector in on this deceit as well I hated myself then for not saying it anymore I just kept my mouth shut and continued on I should have been more direct then with the federal inspector 
but I'm sure he knew that sort of illegal things was going on all the time. He too had done practically the same thing. I knew then that I had to keep my mouth shut. I was still in the process of sponsoring their poor mistreated niece, cousin, and grandmother then. Her interview in Cambodia didn't come around until fall that year, around mid-September. From then on, I kept mostly to myself and tried to avoid the entire damn family as much as possible. I often stayed out late, hanging around at Starbucks for hours on end, mainly working on my third writing of Shin Shin Nagami, the bastard torn, and the succubus they slept with. I was avoiding them so that they don't get me too involved when they're illegal and sinful means then. I was doing my best to keep my space from them. I often left for work early and come home late. I only come home to sleep in their basement and often eat out at the local fast food restaurant and diners on about the Green Valley Miss area. Another example I can share with you about the reader about the two-faced Christian. Recently, one of their in-law died from several long painful days battling pneumonia and other illnesses that she had been struggling with for many years. I'm sorry to say she had lost the fight against time and mother nature. She died painfully while in the ICU ward at one of the local general hospital. She was a good humble person. She seemed to be a devoted wife and loving mother to her children and grandchildren. From my experience of seeing and interacting with her, she was a wonderful grandmother as well. She was also a devoted Buddhist and wished for a traditional viewing and cremation, accompanied with chanting monks and food offering to her many gods and deity during her funeral ceremonies and memory gathering for 100 days anniversary and such. That's all she had wanted for herself when and after she dies. From the news of her passing, my mother, here back in California, who has come to know and met her several times, decided to devote her time into helping them with the food and ceremony for the deceased preparation. While I was back in the comfort bosom of Long Beach, California, mother flew to the Green Valley Miss Outlet and spent several weeks there in helping both sides of the family with all the arrangement. She practically did all the cooking and food offering with the help of only a few of their family members. Both sides of the family argued over the recently deceased last wishes and, were, and took a while to come to an agreement. They finally went along with their Buddhist ceremony for the person who had recently died. You see how those damn Christians went their way? Even when it has nothing to do with them. They weren't the one who died, son of a bitch. They did the traditional wishes and while the ceremony of the deceased passing was going on in the house with food offering and monks chanting for the deceased to ascend to a better place, these bastardly Christians stayed outdoor hanging around in their backyard and patio chit-chatting amongst themselves and making sure that their Christian faith wasn't influenced by the Buddhist worshippers and ritual that was going on in the house. Come on. They couldn't take a few hours from their Christian faith to show faith and faith in someone else's faith and beliefs? You know, these so-called faithful Christians were once Buddhists themselves when they were living in Cambodia and even when they were re relocated to the state during the 70s and early 80s. They only converted to Christianity not so many years ago. I'm sure God would have understood and forgiven them for that. Although they know, although they known their deceased in law for a very long time, their ignorance goes to show that they have been the degenerate in all this. Although they were Christian, they ate the food that my mother had made and prepared for the remembrance ceremony which had offered to the Buddhist monk and the Cambodian gods and deity first. See how ignorant they were? Damn bastardly Christian, I tell you. What kind of God prevent his devoted worship to shun people they have built long-lasting relationship with and makes them shun other faiths and belief? These people are just plain ignorant, who only care about themselves. And you know what? I'm sure they will fight over the deceased person's life insurance policy and worldly possession as well. They are only driving that thorny spike deeper into their coffin. And the only destination that is printed on their ticket once they to have passed is a one-way ticket straight to hell. And I when and when I see them down there, I smirk, gawk, sneer, laugh, and be on my merry way to put in my work for having sin against Shin Shin several years back earlier. So it is has come down to this. My health is no longer what is was once and I am no longer the pocket Hercules 
that I was once known by, and I am no longer the hardcore devil dog who had much aspiration and many positive outlook back in my heyday as a sailor marine. I was supposed to be this great medical nurse for the Navy, and I was supposed to be this great chief of naval operation for the United States Navy. Now I'm just waiting for my day to come to meet my maker, and when I see him, I'll gladly accept my punishments. Now, getting back to my intro, I had introduced of my often so near-death experience. Well, my day started off normally, similar to my daily routine at most, almost like any other day that I would spend on a regular day. It's a cool September 2010 Saturday. I spent my free time that morning helping my class room teacher, Miss Siegel, move her classroom supplies and belong to our new assigned temporary school just minutes away from the original campus that we were once were. The previous day after work on that Friday afternoon, with the help of her son, her colleague, and I in our SUVs, we moved most of her classroom belong to the new vacant temporary school classroom. This Saturday morning was to be spent arranging and organizing where things go and belong. I spent about four hours helping with the displaying of school supplies and books, setting up the diapers, pamper station, and arranging tables and chairs for the class this coming new week of school. We were preparing our new classroom for our teenage, mild to severe, and non-ambulatory special education student. We took some breaks and snack in between our organization that day. I didn't have much to eat that day, of course. I haven't been eating much anyhow since I moved away from my troubled past and had left behind. I had consumed several small pieces of salted pretzel and after we had set most things to where we were wanted them, we decided to call it a day. The teacher was kind enough to write me a check for my time spent helping and volunteering work with her that day at the new site. Although I didn't want any compensation from her, Mrs. Siegel insisted I accept her payment for my time spent helping her that morning. The good teacher even offered to buy me lunch, but I declined. I had some other errands to run that day, mainly running around town and taking pictures of the scenery and landscape with my Nikon D5000 DSL camera. It's what I do now and during my free time, drive around with Tiffany, my cherry lava red sextera and take snapshots of buildings and landscape that catches my attention and demeanor at the moment. I rarely bother to look at what I've taken pictures of. Usually I just save them in my SD disk. Me and Mrs. Eagle parted ways from the new newly built college-like campus, and I headed downtown and drove about the Metropolitan the University campus, just strolling and cruising for no reason at all. Well, I had some other intentions in mind, some sinful thoughts and agonizing faults that I was fantasizing in my demented head like always. I seem to worsen my personality and emotion these days. I've gotten to the point where I have been seen and been treated for psychological reason on a regular basis these past many months. Since the death of my beloved Shinshin, I have had thoughts of suicide and have called the suicide prevention hotline several times to seek some comfort and security for my dark, wandering mind these days. After a good afternoon of driving and about downtown and such, I stop at the nearby Circle K gas station to get a soft drink from the fountain drink dispensary. While standing in line to pay for my purchase, there were several patrons in front of me, but I only noticed and paid attention to only two. There were these two attractive Caucasian street ladies, one dressed more prerog prerogative than the other attractive lady friend. The brunette tramp had on a long one-piece champagne t-shirt that hung snugly from her shoulder to just below her curvaceous ass. The one-piece blouse was nicely fitted that showed most of her ample cleavage. I noticed that she wasn't wearing any panty as well. Her one-piece blouse snug and snuggled and her firm body tightly, almost revealing her firm camel toe in between her firm creamy thigh as I wondered passionately. The brunette blonde friend was dressed more conservatively in a two-piece outfit that didn't really show much, but it gave the impression that she was in, in fantastic shape as well. They stood there snickering and getting the attention of the male patron who were busy having deviant thoughts and eye fucking them as well as in that convenient story during that awkward brisk center afternoon. The two attractive women would take turn looking at us, the other patron and I, up and down and judging us with their sinful, muddy, hoarding thoughts 
Little did they know what devilish thoughts I was thinking. I was thinking I wanted to fuck the shit out of them. The brunette, especially the brunette there. She was quite lovely in a sense. Her soft and angelic face seemed so captivating. Yet I realized that they were prostitutes. And who were working their working their, this particular block and area. And I was sure, sure that their pimps and deal were out and about somewhere nearby. That's what I had on the back of my mind then. While mind fucking them like I often do with people that I am attracted to nowadays. They paid for their purchase item and went on the out of the convenience store and while on their way out slowly they motioned and beckoned for customer of sorts. I was thinking I wanted to get a piece of that ass but then again I have no idea what diseases or infestation they may have been carrying and definitely they were that sort of woman like that. Just like Delilah and her mother. The very one that killed off my beloved Shinshin Nagami. All good and delicious looking on the outside but their inside could have been riddled with boils and STDs. So I kept my distance and only imagined what could have been. Of course, I would have eaten and torn their flesh out if given a chance with my crazy sexual craving. I have a long thirst for the sinful flesh of another. It's been ages since I had savagely fucked someone. Once my turn to face the store clerk, I bought and paid for my 32 ounce of root beer fountain drink. And once that was all done and said, I left the establishment and, board and boarded my back into my Xterra, parked at one of the gas pump terminal, and made my way back to Green Valley Miss, where I spent the rest of my afternoon and night. I took my time driving back. I drove along Colfax Avenue, heading east toward Tower Road, and then hook a left and went south toward 48th Avenue and back to my place of solitude, of which was in the demon's basement. That concludes chapter one from Engagement in Peril. Uh, be on the lookout for chapter two. The title of chapter two is called God's Bloody Punishment. Thank you for listening. Until next time. This is Do Ra Mi.